Berlin is burning. Almost every night, cars in the capital are set alight. Since the start of the year, a total of more than 360 cars across the city have gone up in flames. The area and make of car are irrelevant. All that matters is that they burn. Berliners are angry and afraid. It's about time they caught them and gave them a severe sentence. They should feel it for the rest of their lives. So who is behind it? That's the question people are asking in Berlin and other major cities such as Hamburg, Cologne and Düsseldorf, where cars are also being torched. The police don't have an answer. The most that they or anyone can do is to speculate on possible culprits. Are they political extremists, insurance fraudsters or just stupid youths? This year there are some crimes which we attribute to left-wing extremists. But that only applies to half of them. At the moment, we'd say the other half are copycat crimes or are the work of people with a history of pyromania. But what are those backgrounds? There is some suggestion that the riots in London spurred the German arsonists to action. Are their deeds a destructive expression of societal frustration? For some time now, youth and conflict researchers have observed that increasing numbers of people feel they are on the fringes of society. Young people in particular are facing a lack of job perspectives and interpret inadequate professional gains as the system failing them. It's a serious problem when people question the order in a complex urban society in such a way and signal that with very simple means they can tip that order on its head and cause it to explode. Using arson is a game, but ultimately a game with political stability and order. And we see how the issue, quite rightly, plays a role in the Berlin election campaign. Until now, the Berlin election campaign has been a bit flat. There have been no explosive issues or debates. The most exciting thing the conservative opposition Christian Democrats came up with was a samba group at their summer party. But now, the party's top candidate, Frank Henkel, has found an issue worth banging the drum about. There's a feeling in parts of Berlin that normality could be slipping away. And in political circles, we're currently discussing the issue of the burning cars. Security and order are classic CDU issues. Henkel wants to prove that everyone is safe with him and is therefore calling for tougher police action. Without the pressure of a manhunt, when people feel they can do whatever they want in Berlin, the consequences are 18, 19, 20 cars a night set alight. Other opposition politicians in Berlin are also urging a greater police presence and a tougher stance. It's a classic, albeit somewhat helpless, response. The FDP supports a lean state, but one which lives up to its responsibilities. And what could be more important than enforcing the rule of law, of ensuring the security of our citizens? There is a lot to be done in Berlin. The question now, though, is what? Frustrated young people across Europe have expressed themselves very differently. In Spain, there were peaceful protests. In England, there was violence and looting. In Germany, there are burning cars. Here, there is no great wave of frustration among young people. Germany still has a good social network and youth unemployment is relatively low. We are not immune to protests, either from poorly trained or well-qualified young people, because they realize that as a young generation overall, they are not getting the chances they deserve. No, we are not immune. While politicians seem interested in the problem only as long as it helps their election campaigns, the people of Berlin can only hope the nighttime flames are doused soon.